okay so today uh, we'll start we'll talk about this capacitors so the mos capacitors basically so in the mos capacitor i mean this mos capacitors how they are formed and uh, uh, like how to how to get their value hmm? so that is what we'll try to see today in today's class and what type of uh, like capacitors are there and what are the uh, reasons because of which this uh, MOSFET capacitance or the parasitic capacitance in the MOSFET comes into the play or it is there and we have to consider this uh, like in the AC analysis. So up till now uh, whatever uh, like we have seen the uh, the drain current equation for the MOSFET so those all are things uh, those all are the things which we have seen for the DC uh, DC this analysis. So if you want to do the DC analysis so then you can uh, use those things but if you have like uh, do the transient analysis or the AC analysis so that time we require the capacitance also because you know uh, that uh, the capacitance plays its role in uh, in AC circuits okay so for the AC circuits we require this uh, capacitors to, I mean this MOS uh, this whatever capacitor is offered by the MOS that we have to calculate okay so to see this uh, we will uh, we will see the the first we'll see we'll divide this transistor into let me see that uh, okay see basically what happens is your mosfet structure is something like this what we have what we see huh? so this is the top view so up uh, till now we have seen the cross sectional view uh, as the lower direct diagram but as we require the capacitance, so we'll see the top view because it will help us to understand that uh, uh, like what are the factors which are responsible for this capacitor. So uh, before starting, let me tell you that this capacitor uh, which comes into the picture is sort of a distributed capacitor. Okay, It is not sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of lumped or a capacitor which have a single value. Okay, I mean it is not at a one place. It's not a lumped capacitor. It is distributed throughout the channel length. So that is what the first thing is and this capacitor comes because of uh, various reasons. So the first reason is the device geometry itself. Okay, because the device geometry uh, is like the channel is like between the source and the drain and uh, they are like uh, differently doped as well and they are connected at the different potentials as well. So the geometry, the, the voltages which you connect, okay, the, uh, the other thing is like how it is manufactured. So process uh, process also plays its role and apart from that when you uh, like make these things completely then you connect them between uh, the the uh, the nearby transistors or whatever transistors you have to connect uh, then you also connect them with some wires so there will be some interconnect capacitors as well so the total capacitor of the uh, whatever is the total capacitor offered by the mosfet uh, or like whatever parasitic you call actually this is the unwanted capacitance which you have okay so this we call as the parasitic capacitance so this parasitic, the total parasitic capacitance which you will, uh, which you will calculate will be, uh, will have like many components. It will be because of the, uh, the process dependent, the process because of the process. So process dependence will be there. Then the geometry dependence that how you are making the device. Then uh, the, the, uh, the voltages which you are connecting and the uh, like wires which you are connecting. So the interconnecting wires. So these are all the reasons because of which this various type of capacitors which comes into play. So first here in this particular uh, like today's class and probably the next class uh, we will see that uh, what is the parasitic capacitance because of the device geometry itself okay not the parasitic capacitance uh, not the interconnect capacitance. So the interconnect capacitance we will see later on okay uh, so dependent upon like the, uh, the process and the device geometry we will see that uh, what uh, what is capacitance offered by that particular component. So that we will see. Interconnect capacitance we will see later when uh, we will study uh, chapter 5 or uh, chapter 6 at that time. Okay, so to start with uh, this device capacitance which we have uh, is like because of the geometry. Okay, so first let's consider the geometry of the device. So that is why I have shown you this top view. So in this top view, uh, actually uh, what you make is the device length. So the important thing is the device length. So this is the source region, let's say, and this is the drain region. Source and drain regions are interchangeable as we have discussed earlier. Okay, so this and these are the source and drain regions. So apart from the source and drain regions, you also know that uh, we have the gate in between. So the gate 
actually uh, the gate should be in between like uh, at the end uh, the, the the between the edges of the source and the drain but actually when you when you make or uh, when you fabricate it so the uh, as like uh, as closely as you I mean as uh, as precise machines as you use th there will be some like overlap between these regions so because of this uh, overlapping there will be something some capacitance which will come okay so there is some this op uh, this overlapping between the drain region uh, the drain and the gate region and the source and the gate region which is shown here so there will be some overlapping and this is like unwanted you never wanted this but because your machines are uh, like whatever you use there will be some overlapping between, between these regions you cannot uh, like exactly do at these edges so because of this overlapping there will be this unwanted thing which will come unwanted parasit unwanted parasitic capacitance which will come there okay so this is the thing and then uh, the source and drain regions are there okay so in the uh, the source and the drain regions these are the active regions but apart from the active region you also like now surround it with the the source and the drain regions both the regions with what is called as the channel, channel stop implant so why you do this channel stop uh, stop implant it is because that you see because you see uh, this is like a single transistor which is shown here the magnified view of the single transistor but in the on the actual chip uh, there will be many transistors so close to this transistor there will be another transistor so what happen if you don't st uh, don't use this particular uh, channel stop implant uh, some like because of some voltages you have applied there may be like unwanted this uh, channel formation which will take place between the nearby regions so to just avoid that we do this channel stop implant so to do this channel stop implant what we do is let's say our substrate is of uh, is, is is if is if of p type then this channel stop implant will be of uh, p plus type so heavily doped uh, p region okay so if it is like uh, 1x then it will be sort of 10x okay so that much difference you make so that is why the i mean uh, this the, there will be no formation you assure that there will be no formation of uh, the uh, the uh, unwanted channel between the source and the uh, between one of the between one of the uh, like terminals of the uh, one transistor and the another terminal of the other transistor so that is what and this is uh, the not only uh, like precaution which you take to avoid the unwanted channel formation we will take some another some other like precautions as well so or some other uh, some other uh, techniques as well to avoid this unwanted channel formation between the uh, nearby devices so that we will see later in uh, in unit 2 or something like that but here uh, we will consider this channel stop implant okay so in this geometry if you just consider so these are the like the parameters so lm is the the uh, actual mask length of the gate uh, so this is what you have like this is the uh, the length of the mask which you will use to fabricate the device but the actual length will be actual length of the device will be like whatever like this overlapping is there so you have to substrate this overlapping so actual length of the device will be this uh, this particular lm minus twice of ld so l you have you denoted by this so these are the things and ld is the gate drain overlap region okay and uh, this diffusion length so this uh, just considering i mean diffusion length is like uh, or you can you can say the the length of the source region and the drain region so the length and the uh, width of the source regions are denoted by y and w okay so these are the things and uh, uh, in this region also you can see uh, the top region the top view you have seen uh, whereas the cross sectional view also you can like correlate with the uh, things that how they will look like okay now let's move on to the things so to show this particular lumped capacitance in this diagram if you'll see this lumped capacitor actually uh, to uh, to differentiate between various terminals uh, what we do is like we show the this parasitic capacitance the total parasitic capacitance in between various terminals rather than rather than showing it as a single capacitor we sort of try to distribute it up somewhat okay uh, and show it between some this uh, some, between the uh, between the terminals of the uh, this mosfet okay and uh, the another important thing is like whatever model we will develop or whatever equations we will develop they are approximate equations okay the exact calculations is like out of scope because uh, this is like uh, to to exactly calculate the mosfet capacitance uh, what we will require is uh, the the three dimensional sort of uh, voltage capacitance relationship okay and uh, this this uh, capacitance are not the lumped capacitors they are distributed capacitor so the things will be like very complex uh, to or very complicated to model these things 
so we are what we are doing here is just the uh, just the approximate uh, for the approximate calculations that what will be the approximate capacitor which will be offered by this uh, device so for the hand calculations sort of we can use this okay then uh, this capacitance what you uh, what we will like study here depending upon the the uh, the device geometry uh, we divide it in we divide it between uh, like oxide related capacitance and the junction related capacitance why why this differentiation because this uh, the, the, uh, this particular thing is because the, when you consider when you consider the uh, the total capacitance because of the geometry so it is because of the oxide because you see the oxide is there in one of the in the gate in the this channel region so that oxide itself that structure itself will provide some uh, this uh, capacitance whereas the uh, in the other side the junction related the drain region and the source region have this uh, depletion region under them okay so because of that some capacitance will come okay because they are reverse bias junction so that capacitance will come there as well so we divide that uh, the, we divide the total uh, this uh, geometry related capacitance uh, into two parts oxide related capacitance and the junction related capacitance okay so uh, the uh, here in this diagram which you can see is like both the uh, both the this both the type of capacitors are shown the pink uh, the color capacitors which are shown here cgb cgd and cgs they are called uh, they are like because of the oxide related okay so they are oxide related capacitances whereas this uh, green color capacitors which you can see, see here they are because of the uh, junction related so because of the depletion region so this we will study later in the next class so probably we will try to complete this three capacitors today okay so the whole capacitance which is offered is like divided between uh, this three terminals and this uh, uh, like what we how we show this uh, we show it by this uh, the subscript of the capacitor so cgb is actually the capacitance between gate and body hmm? gate and body so between this two gate and the body terminal whereas the uh, capacitance between drain and uh, gate is denoted by uh, this cg uh, drain and gate so cgb hmm? cgd sorry so cgd gate and drain whereas gate and source it is denoted by cgs okay and this being the cdb drain to body and this being csb uh, source to body okay so these are the various uh, type of capacitance which we will see so now let's move on to first to the overlap uh, this uh, oxide related capacitance just this oxide related capacitance as well you can divide it into uh, further you can divide it into two parts Sir, basically, what is the meaning of this lump capacitance, sir? Lump is the meaning of it. Lump means concentrated. Okay, like when you uh, when you purchase a capacitance from a market, it is a sort of lumped capacitor. When it is concentrated at one place, it is called lumped capacitor. When it is distributed, like uh, suppose you are using a, a a a transmission line, okay, to to supply some wire uh, to supply some power from one end to another end. so that supply line will be at certain other potential and the ground is at certain potential at certain other potential and that is distributed between two points completely it is not the capacitor which will be there is distributed between like completely between those two points isn't it so that is why uh, that is what is called as the distributed capacitor okay so that is what the difference is okay sir okay so you see uh, this oxide related capacitance which we are talking about Uh, is like can be further divided into two components one is called the overlap capacitance and the another one is the non overlap capacitance so the overlap capacitance is actually we are talking about the uh, the overlap between the source and the drain region okay and i mean why we are dividing this this overlap capacitance and the non overlap capacitance overlap capacitance is actually uh, is present always i mean is always present there because it is like it is voltage independent whatever uh, i mean uh, if you don't connect this uh, gate and uh, uh, this drain and uh, this drain and source region to if you don't connect it to any voltage even then this capacitance will be there but the other capacitance which we will see the other component of this oxide related capacitance is dependent upon the voltage which you apply at the terminals okay 
so that is why i have said that it has two components so this component the uh, what we uh, what we consider here is overlap capacitance is is bias independent it is like not dependent upon what voltages you are applying here okay and this particular total capacitance let's say is your uh, this three components which uh, we will study here cgb cgs and cgd so cgb hmm, gate to body will uh, will not have this overlap component okay whereas this gate to source and the gate and drain will have some overlap component so that is how i mean how we define them uh, we define them as like c ox into width of the region so capacity the c ox is nothing but the capacitance per unit area okay so this is what we have uh, this we this this particular thing we have seen earlier as well so this is the same thing c ox now if you have the uh, capacitance per unit area then this and this is like because of the oxide which you are using there okay uh, the silicon dioxide you are using there on the uh, over the channel okay on the gate terminal so that is why the c ox is fixed so c ox is that now uh, this particular thing is overlapping that oxide region is overlapping with the drain uh, and the gate region so how to get that particular area where it is overlapping so we multiply this width of the uh, the source and the drain region with the overlap length because if you have uh, the capacitance per unit area here to get the total capacitance we have to multiply by some area so this is the area which we do so cgs overlap we denoted by this particular thing whereas cgd overlap will also be same because uh, in most of the cases this uh, the overlap region on the source side and the drain side is almost equal and rarely they are like unequal if they are unequal then you have to use uh, actual uh, like whatever uh, the lens of the this overlap length in the source and the drain region but here uh, for simplicity we are i mean uh, mostly you will see that uh, both of them are equal okay so the overlap region will be usually equal so that is why we this uh, the cgs overlap and cgd overlap will be cons will be equal as well okay now uh, so this is overlap capacitance now we will see that uh, the another component which is bias dependent component so this bias dependent component is like it is not fixed it depends upon like how much voltage you are applying to the terminals so if you apply more voltage the capacitance will be different okay if you apply less voltage the capacitance will be different okay so i mean why this is happening why this is voltage dependent okay so the reason is you can understand it very easily by this diagram see when i mean this uh, this diagrams we have studied earlier but not with respect to the capacitance we have not seen this diagram with uh, reference to the capacitance that how the distributed capacitance is changing between these two uh, terminals when the channel is like tapering okay so the three diagrams shows you the three uh, like cases so in the first case when you don't apply any voltage onto the gate terminal so the, this is like cut off hmm? so when your uh, gate voltage is less than threshold voltage you can say so when there is no channel formation ideally so in that case uh this 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 because this 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 whole gate layer is distributed okay so it will have like it will there will be some you know some capacitance at every point which will which we cannot calculate which is very difficult to calculate so we concentrate it at certain points to calculate so let's say this is like completely distributed and this channel is this upper layer is there and the lower layer so Uh, no like the the uh, the body is like completely uniform here as well so the uh, the oxide capacitance whatever cap the whatever uh, this capacitance is offered is like equal between the source and the drain region but as you change the voltages uh, at the source drain and the gate terminals so when this gate terminal voltage is above the threshold voltage the channel is formed so the channel formation you can see now when it is Uh, when it is below like when it is operating in the linear region when vds is less than your vgs minus vt so in that case this channel is tapered let's say okay and when your vds is greater than vgs minus vt then what will happen your uh, this uh, device is working in the saturation region so at that time there will be like pinch off and after the pinch off there will be this channel length modulation which we have seen so the channel will be uh, will not be present here in this region so you see if this capacitance if this channel is like uh, if the channel width or the length is this changing so the amount of charge carriers present in this region will be less compared to in this region 
so that is why the capacitance the volt uh, the the potential difference between this point and this point will be different than the potential difference between this point and this point okay because the channel uh, the charge distribution is different in this region so that is why the capacit the capacitance offered by uh, into this regions will be different okay because you are applying different voltages so that is why this is voltage dependent and in this third case in this particular drain site there will be no capacitance because uh, because it is like sort of uh, no channel is present okay so you are assuming that uh, all the capacitance is present towards this side towards the source side but here the total capacitance like uh, if this capacitance is x okay which is offered in this particular case here it will not be x it will be somewhat somewhat less than x hmm? so we will consider this one by one so let's move on uh, so there will be three regions cutoff region linear region and saturation region we are considering the voltage dependent part so voltage independent part we saw earlier okay uh, which was cgs overlap part now this voltage independent part so the voltage uh, sorry voltage dependent part so the voltage dependent part uh, see what will happen when there is no channel formation so when there is no channel is there so at that time this cg scgd is equal to zero as there is no channel okay whereas your gate capacitance to the substrate gate to source and gate to drain there will be no channel this no uh, cgs and cgd part but cgb gate to body gate to body will be how much whatever is the oxide capacitance into the net length this l is your uh, uh, mask length minus twice of ld so lm l, l here is like uh, lm minus twice of ld so this is what we have seen earlier as well in the previous slides so this is what you are considering here. So see, this is your C gate to body voltage. Okay. Whereas in the linear region, the this uh, CGS and CGD part will be equal. Okay. What we are assuming here is like whatever is the uh, total capacitance offered between the two regions is sort of let's say equally distributed. Hmm? Equally distributed between the source and the drain region. So whatever is the capacitance offered by this particular uh, this gate oxide. Uh, okay. This is like uh, half towards the source side and half towards the drain side hmm? whereas in the saturation region as i have shown you in the previous diagram that uh, the cgd part gate to drain will be zero whereas the cgs part will be how much will be uh, let's say because it will not be like uh, the the channel will will never go to 50 percent it will uh, be somewhere 60 70 percent so we assume uh, approximately that cgs will be approximately twice two third of this part okay so whatever uh, the total capacitance uh, this capacitance c ox w by l offered by the offered in this region so two third of this is offered in the saturation region so you can see that uh, the this particular component is like changing okay depending upon how much voltage you are applying onto the three terminals so if we just accumulate this all three uh, this all capacitors and just show in it, uh, show it in a like single way in a single at a single place so then you can see that this capacitance is somewhat you can like make a table and show it here so the capacitance in the cutoff region uh, the cgb portion okay so you see here on the uh, in this in this table you can see uh, cgb cgd total so we are talking about the total capacitance so the total capacitance will have two components voltage dependent and voltage independent so this voltage see this is in the cutoff you have this maximum so cutoff linear and saturation region so cgb gate to body in linear region if the device is operating in the linear region cgb will be zero so this table means that cgb will be zero as well in saturation region but cgb will be maximum when the device is operating in the cutoff region and the value of that will be cox wl right whereas cgd CGD in cutoff this cutoff I mean uh, this uh, if the device is operating in the capac in the cutoff region this capacitance will be constant okay this capacitance will be constant which is C ox WL okay whereas this cutoff region uh, this gate to body voltage whereas uh, the gate to drain voltage uh, sorry gate to drain capacitance in the cutoff region will be this much hmm? C ox WLD whereas gate to source will be c ox wld so if you want to know the total cutoff capacitance the, it will be the sum of this uh, three capacitances okay this uh, c ox wl c ox wld 
and Seox WLD. So twice of Seox WLD. Okay. So this is the total capacitance offered in the uh, in the uh, this your um, cutoff region. So this is what is shown here. So you see the capacitance is also continuously changing. It will be different in the cutoff region. It will be different in the linear region. So the linear region, if you see, uh, CGB portion will be zero, whereas CGD portion will have two components. Cox WL by two, which is because of uh, your this uh, we have discussed. Okay, uh, the because you are dividing this capacitance here in the two portions, whereas this is because of the overlap capacitance. Okay, so this was because of the distribution phenomena. Uh, you have divided the uh, the the capacitance because of the channel uh, towards the source side, half towards the source side, and half towards the drain side. Whereas the overlap capacitance is constant in the two sides. Okay, so this is what in the linear region. Whereas in the saturation region, CGD will be equal to this because in saturation region, uh, this portion will not be there because there will be the channel will not be present there in this case. Okay, whereas CGS will be approximately two third of this uh, this portion, so, and this will be the uh, minimum. Okay, so you see. You can like differentiate. You can uh, easily say that the capacitance will be minimum in saturation, whereas it will be maximum in cutoff, whereas it will be in the in the in the intermediate range between in the linear region. Okay, so the capacitance is also changing. Hmm? So this was all about uh, this particular capacitance. Uh, then we will move on to the junction capacitance. So uh, I think we should stop it. Uh, stop the today's class here. The junction part we will see in the tomorrow's class. If you have any doubt related to this, uh, you can ask it now. Is it clear? Yes, yes, sir. So, what is LD, sir? 